Looking at photographs is something that photographers should do. My source are exhibitions and books. Let's talk about photo books. Hi, it's Peter here, and let's get right into the business. I have a small collection of photographic books. I've been collecting them for many, many years. I haven't bought really that many books lately, but back in the days I used to get them almost every week. So that's why I have a quite nice collection of books. And before we get into that collection and what books I really like, let's talk about why looking at photo books is important if you want to be a better photographer. Of course, we can go online and look images for, from there, and I think it's a good way. But the problem is that there are tons and tons of images and not really curated in that sense. We've, uh, we've got uh, photographers' uh, websites, then we have, you know, Instagram and, or, or other social media sites. But they are not, in that sense, a very curated thing. And let's say many of the photo sites has become cluttered with, uh, you know, selfies and, and photographs of what did I eat today. And, you know, they kind of uh, have changed so much that they are not that interesting anymore. For example, like Instagram is not very interesting anymore. But if you want to see my images, I'll put a link in the description and, and, and follow and I will check your Instagram feed because I really want to have some more of photographers in my Instagram feed and not just friends. No offense to against my friends, but they post whatever. Sorry. And then there is, of course, the important thing, seeing the photograph printed. You can, uh, you can look at them at exhibitions or you can hold them in your hands. But of course, it's very rare that you can hold a real print from a famous photographer in your hand. You might have them, but it's not very common. The best way to do that is to get a book from certain photographers. And that is something when you're actually holding the photograph and, and, and seeing what it looks like. And usually those photographs are good because they are curated by someone who knows the photographer or even the photographer himself has chosen to those exact images. And a book might have a story and a book might have a theme. So that gives a lot information about the photographer. And I think that's really, really interesting to uh, think about the books and look at the images and, and see why the images were chosen. And also some of the books even have some text about the photographer. There might be a foreword and where the whole idea of the book is explained and all that. And it's, it gives a lot more to the image when you know some background of the photographer or the project or whatever. And I think that's one of the biggest things in books. And for me also, the books are really, really big inspiration because when you're looking at different types of photographers' work and their body of work and their projects, you kind of, your uh, imagination starts crying. You start seeing images in your, maybe someone has doing some street photography somewhere and then you start seeing those images in your own city. And when looking around after looking a book, you, you feel really inspired. At least I do. And I get a lot of inspiration from different books. It doesn't mean that I'm copying someone because, of, of course, copying is, is something that you should not do in the long run. But when you're starting out, just get ideas and, uh, and uh, things that others have photographed. Just do that. And there is a video about the whole this topic about similar images or copying images. What you should think about that. Look at that video after this. I will have an end screen of that video too, so you can watch it after I watch this video. But let's continue. But where to start? What kind of photo books should you first look at? My recommendation is, of course, if you know already some photographers that you really like, just get the books from them. But if you don't have a really clear idea what to look, then books like collections of different photographers are really good because they give you kind of a broader idea of different photographers. And then if there is someone that you especially like, get a book from him or her. And that's a good way to start. This book, for example, from John Svarkovsky, looking at photographs, 100 images from the collection of MoMA. John Svarkovsky was an art curator in MoMA. He is responsible for photography becoming art. He was really doing that. And he has collected and add some text to 100 images from the MoMA collection. And that's a really good start to, if you want to learn about new photographers or you want to learn more about history of photography. And like I said, the good thing about books like this is that there is a big variety of different photographers where you can pick up and see that, okay, this particular photographer is interesting. 
I'm going to look into that work. I'm going to on, maybe going online and then maybe going to a bookstore to get that book and start learning about his or her work. It's really inspiring. And then do not forget about biographies. If there is a biography about your favorite photographer, read that because that gives a lot more information about his or her life or thinking about how she or he involved as a photographer and because we all live our own lives and we have our own experiences and of course that will affect our photography how we see the world what do we think then and, and what do we see as a problem what do we see as a good thing what do we see as a beauty what's ugly all that and if you are reading the biographies those will help to understand the work of a photographer because sometimes photography can be a bit uh, uh, confusing. You don't really know what, what's going on. Why is someone taking an image like this? Or what is this whole collection? But if you can read about the photographer's life, that might help. And of course, if there are any online interviews, that might also help. And then a few words about my collection. I would not say that it's really big, but it has some really interesting books from interesting photographers. Of course, I do have quite a big collection of Finnish photographers. And uh, if there are any photographers from your country that might not be well known in a bigger sense in the whole world, please let me know what, what photographers you have in your country that are really interesting. Because I always want to find new photographers to look for. You know, just paste a link in the comments to, uh, to the work. and. Uh, that uh, might not appear the comment, I mean, right away, because if someone adds a link, it will go to a review because there's been some bad links and someone commenting. So I will uh, approve those comments if there is a link. So don't worry if it's not appearing right away. I will, I will make it available as soon as possible. But please tell me about photographers in your country that you are interested in. And what about my favorite books? I do have several books that are kind of connected to my evolving as a photographer. I started as a portrait photographer and one of my favorite was Richard Avedon. And I have several books of him because I really liked his style. It, it was kind of simple image, even though it's a bit complicated sometimes the way he did it and very simple and nice looking images. And especially in Avedon's work, The American West is one of my favorite books. Really great photographs and documents of people in the American West. I think he was photographing these in the 70s and early 80s. Really, really remarkable book. And then, of course, Yosef Karsh is one. I think he's originally from Ukraine, but uh, moved to Canada quite early and was uh, an assistant to a photographer and then started his marvelous career. And his uh, way of making the light in an image or lighting the portrait is, is remarkable. And he was... Uh, he was really master of light and he used a continuous light because then he could see everything and um, used that a bit old fashioned style, style almost like a filmic way of, of making the light in the, in the portraits. And, and somehow he, 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 he is really inspirational. And if you are interested in exploring light in a photograph or in a portrait, you should look Karsh work. And at some point I felt that I've been taking the same photograph for, for many, many years. I had a studio and did a lot of portraiture work, but it was too similar from, I wanted to have something else. And I started to look into totally different type of work like Daido Moriyama, Anders Petersen, and Diana Arbus, for example, is, is really fascinating photographer. Unfortunately, she died of a young, very young age. So we, we would have loved to see what, what she could come up later, but she is really a great photographer. And funny thing is that Diana Arbus and Richard Avedon, they have a connection. They used to photograph in the streets together, even though I've never seen the images that Richard Avedon made. And the reason they were connected is that they had, or their parents had a store on Fifth Avenue in New York, in Manhattan. So they're both well off from a well, very wealthy families. And, and that's probably why they was they were able to start their career as photographers. And as we know, Avedon came world famous and you know Arbus unfortunately came famous after her death and then one of my favorite is uh, Helmut Newton which is another genre that I photograph that much but he has a very interesting and distinguished style in, in fashion and model photography and also his biography is really interesting there are some 
shocking facts and interesting stories about his life, why and how he managed to be what he was. And then if you're interested in uh, more of a documentary style photography, then Robert Franks, The Americans, is, is a classic and something that you really should look into. He was a Swiss photographer that traveled around US. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, the images that he showed was not appreciated by the Americans. So the first edition of the book was printed in Europe because the American uh, publishing houses and would not publish it because they didn't like the images. But of course, when it came really famous later on, it has also printed in the States. So sometimes the the story of a of a book is 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 really interesting but robert frank look into that is really really something and of course there are some books from newer generation but i mo mainly have photographers from the classic era of of uh, photography and what about you do you have a favorite book please let us know in the comments down below a book that you really love a book book that inspires you or book that just you know you just want to go back into those images and i will have a links in the description of this video to different types of books that i've had and you know affiliate links so if you buy a book from that i will get a small commission but you don't pay any extra and here are some more videos about photography you might want to watch those next but hey thanks for watching and bye for now